Welcome to CFRI Cystic Fibrosis Community Voices, a video podcast series created by and for the cystic fibrosis community. Hi, my name is Kristen Shelton. I'm a respiratory therapist at Packer Children's Hospital. I've been a respiratory therapist for about the past 37 years, and I've been working for Packard for 34 years. The reason I was drawn to respiratory therapy was that my older sister had just finished the program. She recommended it, and it was something that I could do where I could continue to attend college because of the shift work. You could work evenings or weekends, and it sounded appealing. I had never heard of respiratory therapy, but my sister assured me it would be a great career for me, and I am happy she did. Once I started respiratory therapy school, I was able to get a job working at the Children's Hospital at Stanford that was located on uh, Sand Hill Road. So this is a very long time ago. The uh, Children's Hospital offered me a position where I could work as a respiratory therapist while I was going to school. It's a great opportunity to learn about the profession and to uh, work with kids. And once I started working there and working with children with CF, and there were adults with CF there also, I just realized that it was a group of people that were very um, inspiring to me. I loved the way that they wore their clothes during the day when they were in the hospital. They didn't act like they were sick. Uh, They were encouraged to continue their activities every day that um, kept them busy going to school. Um, visiting with their families and they did this all while they were in the hospital getting treated for this chronic disease that I'd never heard of. Uh, And I just found them very inspiring and I wanted to uh, work closer with them. When I first started in respiratory therapy there weren't that many options for people with CF. We had nebulizers that were very old-fashioned and we had a few medications but a lot of the major heart rate race and they weren't nearly as beneficial as the medications that are available now. There were not very many inhaled antibiotics. Uh, There was no Pomazyme. So it was kind of like the dark ages for uh, CF care. We had, we did a lot of chest physiotherapy and a lot of laughing and that's how we got through it. Uh, I think the most rewarding aspects of my work have been working with families that I've known for many, many years and watching their children grow up and thrive and uh, getting to know the families and uh, helping them through whatever support that I can provide as their respiratory therapist. I'm proud to offer support, education, and just my presence. Sometimes that's all I can give, but that's enough to make families feel comfortable. I, I guess I would say one of the most challenging things working with people with CF is is watching them grow and thrive and uh, become young adults and then get sicker. That, that just kills me every time to see people suffering in their um, adult years with this disease that is so difficult to treat. I, I guess I would say that's my most challenging thing. How do I keep my energy going after all these years? It is so rewarding to me to work with families and to be there for them in their deepest, darkest places where they recognize me and I'm just a source of comfort for them. Even if there's nothing that I can do, I'm there for them and I try and be supportive. And sometimes that's all I can do, but I think it's important to families to have somebody around that they know and that that they can glean comfort from. I don't know if you know this, but when I'm not at work, I spend a lot of time with my animals at home. I have three large dogs and two cats and a husband that takes a lot of my time. (laughs) This is my favorite line. The best form of respiratory therapy to use is the type that you can get your child to perform (laughs) that they enjoy or at, at least that they will do. And the whole point is airway clearance, you need to get the mucus out of your lungs and sometimes exercise is the way that kids can do that and airway clearance is really important but I like to make it a family affair so 
hiking and doing things with your family, playing games during the breathing treatments, anything that you can do to make it into more of a family affair than a simple thing where you're being excused to perform your treatment by yourself. Hmm. The tips I have for parents whose children are resisting doing therapy is to make sure that you're including the child in all of the family activities and likewise when the child has to perform airway clearance or do treatments it's important for the family to join in with them and make it fun. And there's a lot of ways to do that by watching favorite videos or by playing board games at the same time the treatments are going on. And by providing the support that your child needs to be able to uh, get these treatments in. Cleaning the equipment, helping them clean the equipment, being there for them when they're doing the therapy so that they don't feel isolated. I think those are important things. Support, it's all about support. I think reward systems work well for younger children. Uh, I don't think it works that well for teenagers. Um, teenagers tend to uh, respond better to um, consequences. <laughs> and the consequences have to be decided upon by the parents and the teens themselves. So. Whenever anyone asks me what the best tips are, I have to think back to the mom who told me that Whenever her child does respiratory therapy treatment, she lets him watch TV. And he would ask her to do treatment so that he could have TV time. <laughs> and I thought that was just about the most uh, greatest idea I'd ever heard of. Some of the other uh, tips are to make sure that when you are doing your activities, that you schedule in the therapy, that you, are, you don't make it clear to your child that the the treatments can take a vacation because CF just doesn't take a vacation. So everything has to be part and parcel to what to the rest of their schedule and you have to schedule in treatments and make them very routine and very expected. I think that always helps. Whenever people want to ch ex exchange exercise for airway clearance, I usually refer them to their CF center and their physician because sometimes the physicians aren't okay with that. But if the choice is exercise or nothing, certainly exercise is going to be a better option than doing nothing. Uh, I think your CF doctor would like you to perform your airway clearance as it's prescribed, but exercise is also part of what we need to do every day to keep ourselves healthy. And exercise and airway clearance definitely go together. Some of the ways that I've become involved in the CF community is I was attracted to CFRI very early on because I realized that it was parents that were fighting for their children and fighting for research and new treatments. And I just thought it was a great group of folks, and I've been uh, drawn to them ever since. I've gone to many of the CF educational conferences that they've had every year. I, I love seeing the families that I know, and I think that they enjoy that too. And I've also been on the CFRI board for about the last seven or eight years. And I have participated in CF walks and other um, organizational activities and <laughs> one of my favorite one of my favorite uh, opportunities was working with the breathing room doing poetry and photography together it was um, a very easy way for me to gain a lot of energy and talk about how important it is for me to work with CF patients and the, the closeness that we develop when we have to work so much together doing airway clearance and spirometry and all the things that we do in the clinics and in the hospital. We develop a very close relationship and it's very difficult not to be close to somebody that you're spending such a great amount of time with. It's been a great opportunity for me to get to know families and patients alike, and invaluable also. The thing that gives me hope for the future is remembering that when I started this job, the average age of people with CF was 18 years. We lost a lot of kids that were in their early teens, and it was just heartbreaking. And 
now to know that more than 50% of people with CF are over the age of 18 is, is just a remarkable thing. And every year, because of the new treatments and the research, uh, that age keeps increasing. And that is just a source of hope for me that someday there'll be a cure. I've been really inspired by patients that are so accomplished. They've become attorneys. Um, a lot of patients have gone into teaching. Some of them work in hospitals. That amazes me. <laughs> Very inspirational for uh, people that have so, so many challenges with their everyday chronic health care to achieve such great things is just amazing to me.